All right. Probably have the camera upside down the whole freaking time. All right. Where was I? So, I was going to mention something and I forgot what it was. We got Blue Jays over here. They're announcing that they're coming to get my peanuts. It's always fun to watch them. They tend to make a racket. I don't know if you can hear that or not. You probably can. I'll show you one here in a minute. I did some B-roll. did some B-roll before this, so... Uh, Oh, I know what I was going to mention. Welcome to my backyard. Or AKA the shooting gallery, as I call it. Or the zero range. This is where I a lot of times practice bird photography. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. You're going to have to forgive the noise behind me. We've got a big street right behind me here, so... Uh, it doesn't seem to be too big of a distraction when I do the video, when I edit the videos uh, from what I've seen in the past. So, But I wanted to show you on this 90D my bird settings. Um, a lot of, I see as I browse Facebook uh, on, on 90D groups, what are your settings for birds? I get blurry pictures. What, what are, uh, what settings are you using your camera for? Or what are you putting in your camera to get your birds so, so sharp? That's a lot of questions that you see on those boards. So I thought I would show my settings. I know that uh, a lot of folks, you know, probably have a different way of doing it. This is what works for me. I know it works for a lot of people because I see this quite a bit in other videos or other people mention it, and this is how I figured it out. Uh, so, um, but we'll go over that and this. Now I wish I had three cameras. <laughs> that Blue Jay over there is just messing around. I got some good footage of the, 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 the Blue Jays here in a minute. I got some Cardinal stuff too, so... Uh, we'll get, uh, I don't know if I put that in the beginning or maybe I'll put that at the end. Maybe I'll put it in the middle. Who knows? Um, the first, let's talk about a telephoto lens. Because this is right here is a nine, Canon 90D with a telephoto Tamron 150 to 600 lens. That's a lot of reach. The number one thing I think I think most people make a mistake on with new photographers, people new into photography, is they don't shoot their shutter fast enough for these these long lens. You got to remember the number one rule. It's my number one rule for shooting telephoto lens is your shutter has to be at least the length of your focal or the speed of your focal length. So if you're shooting at 400, you have to be at minimum one fourth, one four hundredth of a second. If you don't, you're going to get blur. You're going to get soft images. No matter how steady you're going to be. The only exception to that is if you're on a tripod, you're doing landscape photography, and you're shooting long exposure. But you have to be on a tripod to shoot that. Personally, I try to always double it. So if I'm at 400, I try to be at 800. If I'm at 600, I try to be at 1200. That said, 
you got to learn where your the 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 strong points of your lens are. This is a Tamron 150 to 600. I think anything over 500, the images can get a little bit softer, uh, especially when you're all the way out at 600. I think the images tend to be a little bit softer. Um, Still good enough for Instagram or Facebook if that's what you all you want to do. Um, if you're a professional, you probably already know that. But just remember, minimum, you have to have this thing at your focal length. That doesn't matter if you're with Canon, Nikon, all the other ones, Fuji, whatever. You that's that's a rule of photography. You have to do that. Okay, <clears throat> another thing, today is a perfect example, it's cloudy, it's going to be very hard for me to get that high of a shutter speed, so that means I'm going to have to raise my ISO, and you're going to start getting really noisy images after 1600. I personally think you can still use your images but remember if you're trying to get birds in flight you've got to be super fast you're going to be up in over one sixteen hundredth of a second one two thousandth of a second if you want to get those wings frozen so you got to remember what are you trying to get are you trying to get a bird in flight you're trying to just get the bird sitting down how fast is my shutter speed how much light do i got how high is my ISO got to be? All things you need to consider when you're shooting and trying to get an image that's not blurry or fuzzy. With that said, that we'll go into what I make sure that my camera is on. This is the 90D. So we're going to switch over here. I'm going to try to do it this way. So you're going to have to hit Q on the back. And the first thing I go for is AI Servo. I want this, when I am shooting birds or animals, I want AI Servo. What that does is it lets the camera do its deal on tracking the bird or tracking that object tracking that eyeball tracking that animal it allows the computer to make quicker decisions versus one shot it's basically if you're on one shot you're telling your camera hey i'm on a landscaping mode and i don't expect anything to move here so use your computing knowledge somewhere more valuable at the moment Whereas when you're an AI servo, it's telling the camera, I'm expecting the object that I am shooting, my subject, to be moving around. And I need you to concentrate only on that subject, no matter what the lens or the body is doing. <clears throat> Next setting. This is very, very important. I shoot, I try to shoot in one the one dot mode, the one square mode, whatever. I, I don't know what that's called. I'm trying to explain something now and I can't. <laughs> this thing likes, it needs a longer time. When you shoot here in the cube, the nine, the three by three, what you're telling the camera is everything within that three by three, I am giving you permission to focus on. So it could be the bird behind the one you're wanting to shoot. It could be a brick that looks like it has an eyeball in it that is the, the, the camera is going to focus on. If you're getting soft images, it could be that the camera, and you're in that 3x3 mode, it could be that the camera is has your permission to pick up on something other than what you want it to pick up on. So, now there are times when that is a good setting. Um, it, sometimes it works. That sometimes I'm, when birds are flying, I tend to use that in hopes that I get the right The 
three by three. But when you're giving the the submission to look everything within that highlighted area for your subject, it's going to focus on eyeballs. So if you give that thing permission to do that in that setting, it could focus on anything within that setting that the thinks is your um, works well with birds in flight. If you're trying to get these little itty bitty birds and they're that's a great setting when they're moving around. These birds are super fast. It's like they're superpower. Um, when you are trying to get a bird and it is basically sitting still it's on the ground it's not moving fast I use this one right here the single dot I think that is that right there will give you way sharper images most of the time um, that is the one you really need to fixate on and, and, and use using that mode and trying to get a bird in flight is very difficult so that's when you want to switch back to the th the three by three all right last thing I make sure my camera is set on is high speed continuous and I don't put it in silent mode a silent mode is it will shoot fast but it's only about one frame a second whereas high speed is what 24 frames a second on this camera or 12 frames a second on it. I don't remember. It's fast. It's, it'll get you a lot. Um, but those three things right there, when I'm shooting birds, are what I want to do. What I want. I'm telling the camera exactly what I want it to do. And if you can do, well, those four things. Make sure your shutter speed is fast enough. That's really one of the most important things. Um, make sure you're an AI servo. That way the camera can do its thing. Move in and out or whatever magic it does. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I know all that. I don't. Single dot when you are wanting, like, say you got a cardinal on your bird bath and it's not moving or, you know, not moving a lot. It's just bathing itself that's perfect for that trying to get these blue jays that are diving down on these bird feeders trying to get these pecans you're going to need something a little bit better that that six by that three by three but just keep in mind it can it doesn't always but it, it you're giving the per, the camera permission to the, to sh, to focus on anything it thinks is what your subject is Versus that one square where you're telling the camera exactly what the subject is. <clears throat> and then the high speed burst mode, I do that just simply because uh, you get a better shot at getting an image when you got ten of them versus one of them. <clears throat> These telephoto lenses are outstanding. The Tamrons, the Sigmas, the Canon series, they're all, they all do well. They all have their weaknesses. They all have their strengths. Um, everybody, you know, everybody has their favorite. They're going to tell you, is there one better than another? I don't know. I, I don't think it matters. One thing you hear, and I'm going to do a video on this, is I hear a lot of people say, you can't use old lenses with the Canon 90D. It doesn't work. They, you just get nothing but soft images. That's not true. This thing is from 2015. This is the original Tamron 160 or 150 to 600, and it does phenomenal in images. I have a Canon 80 to 200 L series. It's 32 years old. Phenomenal in images. I'll do a video on that here soon, because it uh, that's just not true. You can use old budget lenses. You can search eBay and find old, older EF, EF lenses 
for this camera and it'll work just fine. It's the photographer, not the camera and not the lens. The photographer that understands what the lens and how to use the lens and how to use the camera and that's how you get images and how you do that practice 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 set up your own zero range in your backyard a bird feeder a bird bath that's all you need some sticks some old broken branches throw them on the ground put some peanut butter on them put some you know get some seed get out there and practice 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 in all different lighting situations and you will get good Im images your your images will get better and share it with the group and ask for constructive criticism there are people out there that understand photography that can help you and can make it and and can teach you by your mistakes that's the the biggest thing is is learn to love your mistakes so with that said I think I am uh, done talking I'm on the verge of rambling um, I'm really really looking forward to getting out and doing some landscape stuff but for the last three almost four weeks we just have not had clouds we've had clouds during the day and then they stick around right to about an hour before sunset and then pff, they go away it's been so frustrating um uh, or the other day i went downtown and it wanted to do a panoramic of uh the cityscape there and just too many clouds moved in at the time it was it was looking really good and all of a sudden just too many clouds showed up and killed the sunset so I'm looking for a different change of season. I'm looking forward to some rain. Might have some thunderstorms tonight. If that's the case, maybe I can get out and do some thunderstorm stuff. I don't know. We'll find out. But anyway, get out there. Have fun with your camera. Shoot every day. That'll make you a better photographer. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you are entertained, hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully this will make you better at shooting birds, shooting wildlife. Um, and uh, if so, might think about subscribing because I'll do more tip videos uh, on, on how to help you become better. Also, just share stuff with what I'm doing. So now I am rambling, so I will talk to you later. You guys have a great day. Bye.